It's great to have our students back. I thought uh, I'm not big on attendance and math numbers. I'm not good at that, but I know it was a great atmosphere. It felt different in there tonight, and I know our season ticket holders and fans love it when the students are there too, but I thought our crowd really helped us. We had some runs tonight. There's a couple times where the guys are just really tired, and I think our student body just kind of picked them up a little bit down there on defense um, on TCU's end. So just thank, thank you to all the students, and um, you know, let's do it again Saturday. Uh, Classes start tomorrow, and then we hope that all of them will come back Saturday. Yeah, those guys play great. Um, you know, in this league, it's just got to – your best players have to show up, and it's almost like your big three. You've got to do it every night, and then you really need a fourth player. And um, I don't know who our big three are because we have a big 11, but we got to have three or four guys every night step up and have big games. And tonight, you know, those guys – I'm really proud of Justin. He's – been dealing with some stuff, you know, injury-wise, and just, you know, he doesn't complain, he works. And tonight I wanted to put him in a situation early offensively where he got in a good rhythm. And, you know, I give uh, the players a lot of credit for that. Good screens, good passes, just good intelligence. Um, and those guys played great tonight. Uh, Coach, uh, you didn't even draw a personal foul until 5.55 in the first half. Uh, and then only 11 for the entire game. Um, so I guess that's the sort of defense that you're looking at, aggressive but not fouling. Yeah, we have a lot of things we try to get done with our defense, and one of them's uh, not to foul. And with that, you know, I was frustrated at times because TCU was getting some great shots and drives, but I guess the the, the other side of that coin was, you know, we, we didn't foul a lot. Uh, I remember as a young coach, I, I used to think like a foul was a good thing, you know, like we're playing hard, but that's just ignorance. And... Um, the great Lute Olsen at Arizona. I spent some time studying him, Jay John, my good friend at work for him. And, you know, he say fouling is not good defense. And so the idea of not fouling is somewhat something we try to do. Um, I thought at the Oklahoma game, um, and you remember I said it after the game, I thought the officiating was fine. I just thought Oklahoma was the aggressors. They earned those free throws. So that was a big focal point in this game that we wanted to be aggressive. You know, I've never – I've never uh, won a fight or been in a fight where you, you take the first couple punches. Like you, when, you, when you decide you're going to fight, you, th you start throwing punches. And with that, you open yourself up to get hit some yourself, but it's a mentality. So, you know, I, I think Oklahoma helped us win this game because we really tried to be aggressive like they were against us. Chris, you got to be obviously very happy with the free throw shooting. That's an understatement. But uh, after Keenan makes those three free throws to put you up, you really look like you ratcheted up your defense and got aggressive on them. Yeah, we uh, free throws are something we just believe in the process. I've never, you know, thought that any player in those moments has to just make the free throw. Like what you have to do is, 365 days a year, your off season, your preseason, you have to pay the price and. You know, one of the best players I ever coached, Chris Jones, he missed a free throw uh, to send us to a, a grade eight one year and at Angelo State. And, you know, I, there's nobody I'd rather have on the line than Chris Jones. And after the game, I just gave him a big hug because him and I both knew that that's just basketball. He'd paid the price, just wasn't meant to be. So in those moments, I just make sure that the guy on the line is somebody that's disciplined enough to pay the price. And Keenan is. Keenan shoots free throws every day before or after practice in his individual workouts. And so I have a lot of confidence when any player's on the line because I know what we do. Um, then defensively down the stretch, you know, TCU is just such an explosive team. You got to kind of pick and choose. You're going to try to stop the three or stop the drive. And I thought late game, our guys did some intelligent things. Coach, uh, to motivate your team, you've actually put some pictures up throughout the USA of some great rebounders before. Obviously, you win the rebounding battle, not overall, but but down the stretch. How did you challenge your team maybe differently before this game? Yeah, so we're not a we don't have any dominant rebounders. I think Zach and Justin are elite athletes. I guess Zach has a potential to be you know a guy that can grab them for money, but. Um, Everybody else, you know, we just are who we are. So we have to be an unbelievable team rebounding team. We got to be a team that doesn't miss blockouts, that our guards rebound down. We have to be tough. And I was a real focal point in practice this week. And again, I give the players all the credit. I think they embrace that we had a problem. I, you know, tell the guys all the time, like, you know, you got a problem, and you say, okay, well, we got this. What does that mean? Or, you know, we're going to do better. What does that mean? Like, you got to have a plan. You know, you got to have a plan. And so, like, we, we know we got a problem rebounding after the Oklahoma game. We put a plan in place, and that plan involved some things we did in practice with team strategy. And I thought the guys executed it great. Uh, TCU is a very good rebounding team. I mean, they put so much pressure on you, so I thought we competed. The, off, the offensive rebounds for TCU were low. They had to be in single digits, and uh, that, that was really a focal point in the game plan. 
Coach, would you talk about the toughness of your team and what they showed you when TCU got a lead there in the second half and, and then your kids came back and, and then closed it out and won the ball game? Yeah, our guys just have a lot of poise, you know, like you, you coach teams different ways and some teams that I've coached, you know, in those moments you have to just be confident and be calm and then, you know, with this team I can really be myself because I can't rattle those guys and I got a piece of them late and um, they, they respond. You know, I really feel like we're in this together. So, um, you know, they're a fun team to coach because they're older guys. You know, I'm going to miss these seniors when they're gone. And um, But it's, uh, it's a part of our identity. And I think one of the reasons why we're pretty good in tough situations, we don't really come unraveled, is because we have older, experienced players. Yeah, not really. Uh, those two guards are so good, you know, and we knew we weren't just going to be able to do one thing against them for 40 minutes because once they get into a rhythm, so our whole idea is to try to keep them uncomfortable. I think the trap helped a couple times, but it really exposed us a few times too. So, um, you know, I, those guards are really good at TCU and give them a lot of credit. We just made just enough plays to get it done. I thought it was an even game. You look at it, like, same number of assists, same number of turnovers, and even in so many ways, I just thought we were a little bit more aggressive and got to the free throw line, which in the end was the difference. Got time for a couple more. Got a question for Coach Well, more of the same. You know, I thought we started the game about as well as we can play. Um, and then the second half, I thought TCU really, really outplayed us. So it's like the tell of two different halves. So the key to us, and it's no different than any other team, if we could ever get to the point where we play our kind of basketball for 40 minutes, then I think we could be, you know, a, a really, really good team. And I'm not talking about making every shot. I'm, talk I'm not talking about getting every stop. I'm talking about just playing the game on our terms, playing tech basketball. When we do that, we have a chance to compete with anybody on our schedule. So we, we just continue to be in this deal where I'm looking for 40 minutes. And tonight, again, we didn't get it. And I give TCU a lot of credit. You know, again, I don't like the coach that sits up here and it's all about me. It's not. It's about them, too. They got a good coach. They got good players, so they do things. But the more we get closer to playing 40 minutes the way we want to play, I think the better team that we can, we can be. Why are you bringing that up again, man? <laughs> well, it was team defense. We gave up a lot of things to try to get that done. Obviously, in the post, we were playing naked a lot, and their post players, he made us pay. But um, again, you pick your poison with good teams. So it was a focal point to try to, you know, we can't stop those guards, but at least control them, change them in some ways. And so I think we were effective there. Um, you know, from TCU's point of view, Jalen gets in foul trouble early. Uh, and he's a special player. Uh, I don't think he'll be in the, this league four years. But um, so we, were, we, we benefited there. But give our guys a lot of credit. I thought we were aggressive tonight. I thought that, um, I thought that we got ourselves to the free throw line tonight with our mindset.